I'm going to my friend's bridal high tea this weekend and I need something white and elegant and exciting to wear. So let's get sewing. I think I've decided I want to make a skirt. I'll insert some images right here of some of my points of inspiration that I found on Pinterest. And basically, I want to just patchwork a few different kinds of white fabric, maybe some lace, maybe some chiffon, and just make a really big twirly gathered skirt. I've never done this before with a little zip, so wish me luck. I started by taking my grandma's skirt, which fits me so well, and I measured out the length of the waistband. And once I got that, I cut out a waistband, which was something like four inches wide and then my waist measurement long, plus seam allowance. And I also cut out that waistband, but in half out of interfacing, just to add a little bit more structural integrity to the waistband. I then gave that a good press to fuse the interfacing to the waistband and then started cutting out my skirt panels, which I would attach for the first tier. And that's what the skirt and the waistband looks like together. Then I sewed my skirt together at one of the side seams and I left the other side seam open for the zipper. I also made sure to overlock those raw edges at this point. After overlocking, I gave the seam and the overlocked edges a really nice press so everything lay flat. Then I gathered my skirt. I put up my stitch length to the longest stitch length possible and I sewed two parallel lines down the edge of my skirt. I like to use my presser foot as a seam allowance guide, by the way. It's really helpful. Then I used my seam ripper to get out the two threads and carefully gather the skirt by hand so it fit the measurement of my waistband. I've never added a zipper to a skirt before, but I'm trying to copy the process from this handmade skirt my grandma made. And it's pretty simple. It's just got a little side zipper here and then a button at the top. And I just love the way it fits me and it feels when I wear it. So hopefully this works. This year I am determined to get more familiar with sewing techniques that scared me and sewing zippers is one of those things. So I did my best with this. I took off my presser foot and replaced it with a zipper foot. Just a regular one, not an invisible one because it's just a regular zipper. And I sewed down my zipper on one side of the skirt and then I flipped it over and I sewed it on the other side. It certainly wasn't perfect, but it functions and that's all I was looking for. Then to finish off that side seam, I just started right about where the edge of that zipper end is and then sewed down that seam. It's really hard to see in this clip here, but you basically just close off that seam as best as you can. And that's what it was looking like. I have to reiterate my inexperience in this kind of construction, but when I sewed the zipper in, it was completely just out to the world. And what I like about this zipper installation is it has these tiny little flaps that just kind of make it look a little bit more invisible. And I didn't really take note of that when I was sewing it. But I don't know, I just kind of like hacked my own little flap just by pushing. You can see, I just pushed some of the fabric over and then top stitched it down. And that is a really, that's a crummy job. I've still got to iron it. <laughs> but oh well, I think it kind of does the job-ish. Don't come for me, I'm sure that's not the right way to do it.
I didn't document attaching the waistband particularly well, but basically I pinned my gathered skirt to the waistband, only one side of it, and I sewed in the middle of those two gathering stitches. I also folded in the raw edges at the end so that it was nice and clean. Then I trimmed off this excess and started pressing it up towards the waistband and away from the gathered skirt. Then I just pressed in my seam allowance so that when I folded it in half like this, it was nice and clean. And I made sure that the pins were basically aligned from the front to the back, if that makes sense. Here you can see they're pretty even. pretty excited. I just finished all of my waistband stuff and all I have to do now is just attach the button and the button hole to this little flap and then we can finally get to the exciting part which is adding all of the tears. But I can't believe it went so well. I'm so happy. <laughs> Yay. Side note. I haven't used my domestic sheen in a second and I forgot I put these little teacups here and I just wanted to show you one of my greatest friends, Emilia, gave, gave me and my boyfriend matching teacups. They're like this big. They're so cute. Ching, ching. Every time I have to do a buttonhole on my machine, I feel like I need to do about 10 perfect ones before I can even touch the fabric. It's so scary. Every time you do a perfect buttonhole, a little star is born in the galaxy. That's what I heard once. If you couldn't tell, I did not check in much at the beginning of this video because I was scared. How many people were scared? Me too. I was really, really scared. I was really scared. Oh! But we are through the thick of it. It was that waistband that I just did not know how to do and also the zipper. And I'm still not sure if I did it technically correct but it looks fine and it functions fine and sometimes when you're sewing for yourself that's all that it needs to be you know anyway I wanted to show you I used to sew on my buttons with my sewing machine and then I realized that that is not the best way to do it whatsoever I met a girl once when I was volunteer sewing for like a musical backstage she said always hand sew your buttons on and she said double up your thread and kind of thread it through your needle then you get the loop where you doubled up your thread and you bring through the tail and I like to knot it off at the end as well so that it doesn't slip through and then now you have double thread every time you sew. That's probably obvious, but to me, I was like, whoa, that's game changing. And it just makes your buttons so much more secure. Also, I got all of my grandma's button collection recently which is deeply exciting and I feel very special getting to wear my grandmother's buttons. And I've been going and showing her, look, this is your button. I used your button. She's like, cool. <laughs> Once I had gotten through all of that nonsense, I was so excited to just start my favorite thing in the world, which is making gathered skirt tiers. All of my tiers were the same width and I just followed the width of my journal because I was like, that's a great template. And once I had figured out that measurement, I just cut that out again and again and again for all of my skirt pieces. Then I sewed them into really, really long rectangles and overlocked all of the raw edges. 
kind of patchworking together a bunch of different fabrics to make the skirts. Also, I sourced all of my material from the op shop and from a dress that I basically never wear. And I love how it kind of gives this fun patchworky vibe. Then once I had my gathered rectangle, I sewed it at a one half of an inch seam allowance to my top tier. Hey everyone, it's editing Carly. I'm sorry for the jump scare. I didn't really explain how I finished off the skirt very well, so I just wanted to kind of explain it now verbally. But basically when you get to the end of your skirt tier, it will not be in a full loop. You could do it that way, sew it as a full loop and then gather it by hand so that it's all perfect. But this is kind of like the cheating quick way and you just sew it on without pins and when you get to the end of that loop, that's when you sew the skirt loop closed. Um, all you're gonna do is just leave about three inches on either side of when you started and when you finished and then you're going to sew your skirt right sides together and overlock that and then you can sew that skirt panel or tier or whatever you call it to the skirt above it. You need to close up that skirt before you attach it. I hope that makes sense. Once your skirt is attached, you can then overlock or zigzag stitch that raw edge. Take out any basting stitches if you have any and top stitch if that's your thing. So that's basically the premise. So I'm going to add a few more tiers to my skirt until I'm happy with the length and then all I have to do is hem it, which is exciting and easy. There's so many ways you could customise this in length, in the amount of gathering, you could even add pockets, which I kind of wish that I'd thought about earlier. Anyway, I'm going to get back to sewing and I will see you when we're at the end of the project. The skirt is all done. I finished by doing a hem and I top stitched all of my skirt seams upwards so that they all lay the same way, which is a little bit extra, but I love doing that. Added my button and yeah, it went so well. This project is easy and relatively quick and I think that anyone could learn to make it. It's also exciting because it has a zipper, but I think that it's a pretty simple installation. But if you're new to zippers like me, I think you can get through it because I did. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you make something similar, please let me know. Also, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you a lot. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave it a like and smash that subscribe button. Let's be sewing friends together. And otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.